Chris, Vinny, the rest of them, we love you. We do. We love you. And you can be just as saved and love the Lord and carry that with you. You can. We, you can. But one day you'll wake up and find out there's power in that book right there. That book's got power in it. Amen. It's got power. KJV 1611. There's power in that book. And then secondly, that book is without error. No mistakes. Infallible. That's why I use that term all the time. Brother Blue, God bless you. I'll sick you all if you want to breathe. I'm a good sicker. I just wonder, like Brother Charles said, that's a King James Version, 1611. How many are of those are in the house tonight? Wait a second. Now hold them up. That book, that makes a devil nervous. <laughs> kind, of, kind of wave them at him just a little bit like that. Amen. Oh, I'll bet you he's looking for a tum right now. Amen. Oh, thank God for the book. You know, someone's talking the other day, uh, just the other day, and uh, they said, well, they took a whole bunch of the King James Version out, you know, and their deletion of it. And uh, they said, we didn't need that. I said, well, what are they going to take out next? And they will take some things out next. There's some, there's some more on the way. Listen, I'm going to keep mine just like it is. Just like it is. Thank God for that. One day while I was thinking of unseen things above, my Savior came unto me, and He filled me with His love. I'm going down this battlefield. I'm going down this war. I'm going down on this battlefield with glory in my soul. Some say, give me silver. Some say, give me gold. I say, Give me Jesus, He satisfies my soul. I'm going down this battlefield, I'm going down this war, I'm going down this battlefield with glory in my soul. Do I hear amen right there? Amen. Amen. Well, I'm glad a bunch of you are back tonight. You didn't get lost and... Uh, you made it back. I'm glad you did. I'm glad you found the way back tonight. Amen. Had a good day today, didn't we? Yes, Had a good day. I mean, I enjoyed it. It was just tremendous. Of course, I, I, I like to, I like to come to this church. I like. To, I don't see why anybody would like to come to this church. Amen. I'm honest about it. I don't see why anybody wouldn't enjoy coming to this church Amen. with the kind of Bible teaching and preaching you have. Yes, sir. Yeah. My goodness, sakes alive! I love it. I love it. I praise God for it. Now, tonight, I want you to open your Bible, if you will, to the book of Jonah. I can't get through with this message. It just keeps growing and growing. I've preached on it for years, and there's just more of it than you'll finish. Jonah chapter 2. Now, I, you know, I hope you'll refresh your mind on Jonah, the book of Jonah 2, chapter 1 and 2 especially. Uh, look those over. Go over them. I told you this morning to read the, uh, the book of Nehemiah, and I hope you will. I really hope you will read that whole entire book. And uh, after you finish that, well, go through Jonah. Refresh your mind on these two great books in the Bible. I want you to stand with me, please, and let's read from chapter 2 of the book of Jonah. Our text verse. I want to read this for a text verse. Chapter 2. It said in verse 6, pay particular attention. You might want to underline this. I went down to the bottom of the mountains. The earth where there are bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. Our Father, take me now for a few minutes. Use me one more time. 
God, on this journey that we've been on a long time, God, let me just preach a simple, understandable message that anybody, the child, can understand. If children understand it, then uh, adults ought to understand it. I pray, Lord, you'll bless this church. Bless them. Bless Brother Lawson. Thank God for him and his good wife and the entire family. Thank you, Father. I pray your blessings upon them. For Jesus' sake, amen, amen. You may be seated. The man, the gentleman that I, the preacher I made mention of this morning, uh, it's in the hospital in Erlinger in, da- in Chattanooga, rather. I got a call just a little while ago that he may be showing some improvement. Some improvement. Let's say amen to that. Amen. And let's pray for him. He's a good pastor. A great pastor. Been pastoring there for near 30 years where he's at. And most of the church, he's one to the Lord. Amen. Preached him right in. Amen. And uh, I want you to pray for him. His name is Brother Randall Hedrick. Randall Hedrick. And he's in the Erlanger Hospital. And if you want to call there and ask for patient information and who tell them who you're calling about, they'll give you the waiting room outside the ICU, and you can find out about it. Uh, you know, the Bible said, pray ye one for another. Amen. Pray ye one for another. And so we ought to pray for one another. Amen. I went down to the bottom. I went down. I, I don't know. I, I, I feel like at some time or other, most of us have felt like we couldn't go much farther down. I, I, I mean, I personally have been there. Have you? I've been to the place where, uh, when I mean, I felt like was on the bottom. When, when a lot of times you're trying to do your best to stay on top. I remember my first time, Brother Lawson, pastoring a church. Let me say this right here: parentheses, hardest job in the world. Right. Hardest job in the world. There's not any harder than that pastoring the church. It's hard on the man, hard on the pastor, hard on the family, hard on everybody. But listen to me. God's got some great pastors today. You've got one right over there. You've got, thank God for it. But I remember so many times, I remember one time while I was studying on this message, I remember my, my first pastors, first time I ever pastored. I don't live far from the little church I used to pastor. Just uh, way back out in the country. But I remember so well, you know the devil can jump on you real heavy, you know that? He can beat up on you. I remember so well, I didn't have any car. I had no automobile, no transportation at all. None whatsoever. And the church that I I was pastoring or trying to pastor... I got up at 3 o'clock in the morning and started to walk into the church. Started to walk into the church. And I'd walk. And that was the day before you got underarm. <laughs> Don't worry. Yeah, you'd have to fully appreciate that if you'd have been there. But I remember, did you ever have a pity party? Yes, sir. Come on. Come on now. Did you ever have one? Yes, sir, Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. But I remember so very well, and with all my heart, I've been walking hard. Sometimes I just didn't know whether I was going to make it by 10 o'clock Sunday school or not. And I'd, I'd see people pass me. I've had them pass me. Here I was with my dime store Bible in my hand. I've had them pass me on their way, got, not going to church. By, but I've had them pass me, and hey, Brother Blue... <laughs> May the bird of paradise fly up their nose. <laughs> you can go on a pity party real fast if you don't watch. And I remember those days when I'd go to the church, finally get there, and, oh, didn't have many. And we'd dismiss for <clears throat> the morning service. And you know, there I was, all that distance away from home. And <clears throat> I remember that. Nobody would even ask me home for lunch with them. And I'd lay down on the pew in the afternoon and rest. Now, get this. I've been on the bottom. And I remember so well when the evening service was over, I'd start down the road walking. 
My members would pass me and say, see you next Sunday, preacher. <laughs> That's when you wish for them a flat tire on every wheel. The Bible said Jonah went down to the bottom. Here was a preacher running from the will of God. Now, it don't have to be a preacher running from God's will. You can do it, and you're even not a preacher. God may have told you and instructed you to do something, and in your own ability, you rebelled. Now, God said rebellion is an awful thing. Yes, sir. Obedience is better than sacrifice. So many times in this life, we get in trouble for not minding God. Here's Jonah. God told him to go one way. Jonah said, I'm not going to do it. I'm going another I'm going, my, I don't like that job. I don't like that. I don't, want, I don't want to go down there. So he found him a ship going the other way. Now, I'm going to say something to you folks tonight. And you better listen to what I'm about to say. You can get off more trouble than you can get out of in a lifetime by being disobedient to God. You can say no to God. And my dear friend, it may be something you'll have to live with the rest of your life. Amen. 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 But what a joy to know when you say yes, you mean it from the bottom of your heart. And God, I'll go whatever the cost. Amen. Amen. But notice Jonah said, I'm going another direction. I'm going another direction. Now, notice the story, the, the, the account of Jonah, when, you, when he started another direction. See, when you get out of the will of God, it's not just you that you can mess up. You can mess up other folks around you. Here he was on a ship, and you know he began to brag and said, you know, he told the sailors, I'm running from God. I'm going to get away from God. Now, I'm going to tell you something you may not have found out. You can't outrun God. Amen. You can't outrun God. Right. You may think you can, but the Bible said the eyes of the Lord are everywhere. Right. He knows where you're at right now. And you know this? He knows the thoughts of your heart. Right. He knows the number of the hairs on your head. And so when you start trying to outrun God, you're making a very foolish mistake. Amen. Now notice... Jonah said, I'm going the other direction. Now, I'm going to say this, and I, it would be a coincidence, I'm sure, but if that person was in the house tonight. But years ago, I was here in Knoxville. I'm not going to tell what church or anything like that. No reason to. But I was here in Knoxville, and I was preaching on Jonah. Oh, I'd have preached it up a storm. And after service, you know, this town is notorious for its eggheads, for its uh, uh, graduates, for all of uh, learning and, uh, and all of schooling here in, in Knoxville. After the service, a young man walked up to me and said, Now, preacher, you don't mean to tell me, as smart as you are, you believe that fish story about a whale swallowing Jonah? Oh, I said, I sure do. Why, he said, I might as well inform you that a whale's construction... His throat is not big enough to swallow a grapefruit. Then I said, Bless God, I might want to inform you that was a special bit of whale. Amen. Shut him up. And I looked at him with his little beady eyes, and I said, Far as I'm concerned, it may have been our conditions. I know, according to this book, a great whale or fish swallowed Jonah. You believe I say amen? Took him down to the bottom. I'm going to tell you right now, this, this is sometimes hard to swallow, but sometimes you can learn more when you're on the bottom than you can anywhere else. You listen. You may be having a hard time right now. And I say, well, I wonder why God's allowing this to happen to me. God knows what He's doing. Amen. God understands where you're at. 
And Jonah said, listen, I looked again to the holy hill. Oh, friend, it'll make you pray quicker than anything else in your world who will not put you on the bottom. He said, I went down to the bottom. When my soul, (laughs) I like it. He said, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. Amen. 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 Jonah. Now listen, you, you'll, have to, you'll have to know this. Those people that God was sending him to worshiped the fish god. I was talking to a doctor one time, and he said, Ed, he said, you, have you ever thought, here they was, worshippers of a fish god, and here's old brother Jonah down in the belly of a whale, watering around in all that acid, that uh, stomach acid, that old big old whale. And said, when he probably when that whale vomited him up, here here's these people standing out there on the shore looking, and here comes a white man out of a belly of a fish. Right. Yep. He said, "This is his action." He said, "Can you imagine them all of a sudden said, you baloney, baloney." <laughs> But he said, I went down to the bottom. I went down. Oh, friend, listen to me. Don't rebel on God. Don't don't get out here and say, I'm not going to go. I'm going to go the way I want to. Mind God. Do what God said to do. You'll never regret it. So Jonah said, when he got there, and you know, I look at him, and God gave him a grow a gourd vine, and when he saw that he he was kind of angry at the people because God didn't destroy him. Let me tell you something right now. We sometimes say, "Well, God, why didn't you do it this way? Why didn't you do it that way?" I'm glad God's doing the driving. I'm glad God's doing the driving, aren't you? Now then, I want to look somewhere else. Oh, brother Jonah. Oh, listen, I wonder how many Jonas we've got in here tonight. I wonder how many right in here right now are doing what God said do. Sometimes we try to sidetrack from the will of God. Sometimes we say, well, no, God, I'll do it this way. No, do it God's way. Do it God's way. I want you to look at something else. When a man thinks himself to be something... The Bible said he's nothing. It's a sad day in your life when you try to outthink God. Listen at it. First Corinthians chapter ten, verse twelve. Wherefore let him think that he thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. Wherefore let him that think he stand take heed lest he fall. One of the status stories in the Bible as far as I'm concerned is Psalms fifty one. How many of you know what I'm talking about? One of the saddest stories, I think, personally in the Bible. Here's a man. Here's a man, a dear man. The Bible said he was a man after God's own heart. You believe that? He was a man after God's own heart. But when you look at him and see his action and see what he's involved in, he's heading for the bottom. He's heading for the bottom, Brother David. Now listen to me. I heard a man not long ago said to me, he was talking just in general conversation, and we was talking about a dear man that had fallen, a dear preacher that had fallen, went down. And this man was brazen and stupid enough, I'd say that way, as kindly as I can, To say, well, bless God, I'll tell you right now, women don't bother me. And I thought, well, bless God, lions got you wrapped up. Right, yes, sir. As long as we are flesh, and we are flesh, and we'll continue to be flesh, I mean, flesh will bother you. Amen? Amen. David, all of us know the story. He went up on a rooftop and looked down and saw another man's wife. He lusted. You say, well, lust is not a part of me. Shut up. Just shut up. 
If you'll just keep your mouth shut, we won't find how dumb you are. The Bible said all that is in the world. Come on. Don't freeze up on me now. All that is in the world is what? The lust of the flesh and the pride of life. Am I right? Say amen. Amen. Don't, 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 don't get up on your high horse with me and say, well, don't bother me. Yes, it does. And don't you ladies sit there and say, well, he does not can't bother me. <laughs> you know you're a storyteller. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. I'm a going to. <laughs> Here's this fella out here in the yard, boy in his yard, got his sawed off some. His old legs look like a sack full of doorknobs with a string tied to it. He said, Give me two. I was just saying, Ever saw <laughs> See, David went on the housetop and looked down and lusted. Amen. Had this man's wife brought in unto him, committed fornication, adultery. Hello. And they know sin has a way of catching up with you. It'll track you down like a bloodhound. God said your sins will find you out. Am I right? Say amen. amen. Let me let me say thank you for the offering this morning for why my preaching tonight I ain't doing my offering no good. Amen. <laughs> but here was David so desirous of this woman that he had her husband brought home. Right. You know the story? Yes, sir thinking that he could go into his wife and everybody would think that that baby she was pregnant with would be his son. And you know what the old boy tricked him? He wouldn't go in. (laughs) Wouldn't do it. So his sins caught up with him. David, here he was, found up, wound up on the bottom. I mean, sin has a way of catching up with you. Now notice... David's prayer, have mercy upon me. Here he begins to pray. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercy, blot out my transgressions. Amen. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgression, and my sin is ever before me. Hallelujah. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts and in the hidden parts. Thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. <laughs> I like it. The bottom, God don't make it. It's a, a hole we dig for ourselves. Here was David. God never got him in this trouble. Here was Jonah. God never got him in that trouble. They did it theirself. Do I hear amen? amen? Notice, David said, My sin is ever before me. Everywhere I go, everywhere I turn, my sin, my sin, my sin, my, not their sin, not somebody else, my sin, my sin is ever before me. Oh, Lord, open thou my lips and my mouth shall show forth what I praise it. He said, oh, he said, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Listen to me, your sins will take your, child, your joy away from you. Amen. Notice. I've got about enough breath for two or three more. Listen to this now. Here's a woman, you might say, in bad situation. Here's the God's man 
walks into town one day and finds a sad, sad situation. Here's a woman out gathered up some sticks. Yes, sir. And he said to bring her some water. She brought her some water. He said that I want you to bake me a little cake. And she said, I'm just getting some sticks. I'm going to bake a little cake for me and my son, and then we're going to die. What a dismal outlook. Yes, sir. What a dismal time. Here she was in such bad circumstances. And you know what the man of God said? He said, I want you to bake me a cake first. Right. Amen. Get me a cake first. She said, I just got a little oil and a cruise. And I just got a little bit of meal. He said, make me a cake first. Amen. Make me one first. And bring it. Can you imagine her? She, she done what he said. Can you imagine her and that little boy with his ribs are showing, starving to death, standing there watching that man of God eat? Yeah. Oh, but when you're obedient to God, everything will work out. Amen. And here he was. Here she was, done what she's told to do. And the man of God said, that oil bar, it'll not run dry, and we're going to have, uh, uh, have food for a long, long time. Listen to me. Listen to me right now. Sometimes you may think you're having it bad, but when you obey God, it'll work out for you. Hallelujah. It'll work out for you. Here's a man in John chapter 9. Here's a man in John 9. And as Jesus passed through, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents, for but that the works of God should be made manifest. Amen. 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 Notice now, when he had thus spoken, oh, listen to this, listen to this. <laughs> he spat on the ground and made a little spill into mud. And you sanitary folks, <laughs> you said, Ew! and wiped it That's right. on his eyes, right. and said to a blind man, go wash. That's right. In the food of soil, which is interpreted means sin. Amen. Amen. And the man went and washed. Anybody want to tell me what that next said? And came seeing. Amen. 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 Listen, when you think you're on the bottom, there's a reason. Sometimes you for, you're you to blame for it. Other times God's got you there to learn you something. Do I say amen to that? Sometimes when you're on the bottom, you are to blame for it. Other times God puts you there to learn you a lesson. Amen. I believe Jonah learned a lesson. He never did forget he never did forget. Oh, dear friend. But notice those sailors. I'm back to Jonah now. Notice those sailors. They said we're going to die. And they begin to throw things overboard. Amen. But God spoke to that fish. And he headed for dry land. Oh, folks. Listen, here I am at my age. If there's anything I want to do, I want to be obedient to God. I want to be. I want to do what God tells me to do, whether I understand it or not. I just want to obey God. I don't have much further to go. I don't have many more miles, but I want to wind up my journey, being obedient to God, just doing what He says to do. I want Him to come to the piano, please. I'm give out two times. Just about works the old man out. I want you to come to the piano and get your song ready. Some of you right now may be out of the will of God because God told you to go one way and you went another. Some of you right now, God may want you 
could join this church. You said, oh, there's too much noise there. Too much shouting there. That preacher slobbers over everybody. Oh, I don't like that. It's not, it's not formal enough for me. I want to tell you right now. You say, well, a whale can't get me. Hush. Well, if God created a whale for Jonah, He can create one and put legs on it to come and get you out of Knoxville. <laughs> he knows right where you live. Yep. Amen. Can't you just see, wake up one morning and a big old whale looking in your window? <laughs> Say, that preacher told me that. <laughs> Amen. I can just see the policeman saying, Breaker, breaker. Whale on the loose. My friend, listen to me. There's no crowd in the world more stubborn than Baptist. Amen. Amen. No crowd in the world stubborn than ba- more stubborn than Baptist. If you're going to learn a lesson, why don't you learn it from Jonah? Jonah, do what God says. Amen. Yes. Just do what God says. You may not like it. You may not think it's the right thing to do, but it'll wind up being right. Amen. And you know it will be. Every head bowed, every eye closed, every Christian praying. Nobody looking around. Softly again, please.